The January 6th commission and Hunter Biden tax fraud investigation now put the Justice Department in a position unlike any other time in history. First, the Hunter Biden news. The U.S. Attorney's Office for Delaware is expected to hear from more witnesses in the coming weeks as investigators look into whether Hunter and his associates violated tax laws, money laundering, and foreign lobbying laws. Among the dealings being looked at, Hunter's work for the Ukrainian energy company Burisma, a country where his father, the president, just authorized $500 million in additional U.S. aid to aid its war with Russia. CNN reports an indictment is very possible. So just think about three facts. The investigation centers around the son of a sitting president, conducted in a state where the now president was the senior senator for 30 years, involving a country currently getting massive amounts of aid from the United States. If that case does not have a massive conflict of interest and multiple conflicts of interest, what kind of case would? Which brings us to the political equivalent investigation on the other side, January 6th. Mr. Biden's Attorney General Merrick Garland is not only running the investigation in Hunter Biden, but must also decide how much DOJ firepower to use helping the January 6th committee. For all the talk of subpoenas and contempt of Congress and charges against President Trump's associates, only the DOJ can charge people with a crime. Joining us now, Robert Driscoll, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General under George W. Bush, now in private practice. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Uh, boy, if that Supreme Court seat Thanks didn't look good to Merrick Garland, a couple of years ago, he really wishes he was there now. Uh, I, I agree. I think he's in a. Um, I mean, it's the job of attorney general is that is that there are investigations that go on that are usually non-public. Um, the idea in our country is that if the government is looking into you and they decide not to charge you, hopefully no one will ever know about it and your reputation won't be sullied. But occasionally, in high-profile cases and particularly politically sensitive ones, uh, word gets out and then there, that puts pressure not only on the defendant, who then has the world know that the government's looking into him or her, but on the, the Department of Justice, because now they know, uh, the public knows that the Department of Justice is looking into this and there'll be criticism whether uh, he does something or whether he doesn't. What do you make of the leaks that may or may not have been authorized, may or not, may not have been planned to CNN, that an indictment is very possible in the Hunter Biden case? Um, well, if it came from the Department of Justice, that would that would be improper. Uh, I, I, I don't I would hope it wasn't them. Uh, they're under an obligation of grand jury secrecy. Uh, sometimes these things happen with defense lawyers or lawyers for other witnesses. Um, they are not bound by grand jury secrecy. They can um, uh, go out and talk. And so it could be that, you know, it could be a defense strategy of getting it out there that this is a possibility. Uh, it could be people kind of softening the ground in case they think there's a, a, a shoe dropping. But again, we've seen, I mean, if it's one thing, it, it, no matter which political side you're on, if there's one thing we've seen over the last few years, is there's a lot of imminent indictments that aren't so imminent. Um, yeah. You know, uh, the, 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 the cable news record on, uh, on imminent indictments has not been great over time. And so, I mean, I think we'll wait and see, but I think that Certainly from the documents that have come off the laptop, you know, there's certainly some fertile ground there for DOJ to look at with respect to Hunter Biden. How difficult is this for Merrick Garland, who has to decide on one hand, investigating the president's son, and on the other hand, has to make the decisions about how much DOJ firepower to use to support the January 6th committee. There are no right. more political issues than those two in America right now. Right. Well, I don't think they're necessarily in conflict because DOJ is a big department and they can they can have the resources to do both. I think the problem with any politically sensitive uh, charging decision like Hunter Biden is, you know, no one is above the law for sure. But you also don't want people to be below the law either. And so for some aspects of the Hunter Biden situation, um, you know, he's got to look at it and say, OK, if someone didn't pay their taxes for a certain number of years and then they wrote a big check at the end and did pay it, is that something the department would typically charge mm -hmm. criminally? Uh, or is it something that would be dealt with on the civil side through fines and otherwise? Yeah, um, similarly, with the, the FARA issues with foreign governments, those are hard cases to bring. There have been lots of investigations and grand juries in town related to foreign agent kind of cases, some of which have gone places and some of which haven't. And so the department has to make the decision of, you know, you, you, they're you only say, supposed to bring a you case say the they're convinced but they can they You can say win. the department. How much of this, though, is up to Merrick Garland? Because the department also has to make the decision, do we enforce the subpoenas from the January 6th investigation? Do we go and, right. and charge people with contempt of Congress as a crime right. versus not? 
And yep. then if all of a sudden Republicans come into power, do we use the same level yep. of criminality to go after people that the Republicans want to go after? Well, the subpoena issue is a lot tougher, and it, that will be, I think, a, a Merrick Garland level decision. That will be into the AG's suite to decide whether or not they want to bring contempt charges against some of the, these people. And I think that every case is different, and those are hard cases to bring, and the department traditionally has not brought them. And as you said, you also have to have a little bit of political savvy if you're the Department of Justice and realize that, you know, 11 months from now, uh, you know, Jim Jordan's going to be shooting subpoenas down Pennsylvania Avenue like he's got a t shirt gun at the basketball game. Um, and the shoe's going to be on the other foot in terms of people not complying with congressional subpoenas. And so the precedent the department sets now um, is, is going to be, you know, obviously held yeah. against them when, you know, if you can envision two years from now, it's not hard to imagine that Ron right. Klain might be resisting a subpoena for whatever yeah, reason. And I, 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 just correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Obama DOJ refused to charge criminally in very similar cases to what you just laid out, Fast and Furious. They they, they they did and, and they, they they did not um, of course it was their own their own party uh, in power at the time but they didn't you're, you're right there was uh, there there were some con contempt against Holder uh, and I think contempt against someone else as well and also the Lois Lerner case uh, they did not enforce the the, yeah. the contempt hey, Bob, now, of course we, all these are different there's yeah no it's, of degree, it's all but, it's all but different that, which is why it comes down to the man um, making the decisions uh, it's always good to see you thank you. Thanks for having yeah, me. And you're, you're very right to say, <laughs> hold back on cable news uh, imminent indictments. We'll keep that in mind. All right. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.